Pleasure of talking today to Farida Bedwin. Farida is a technology leader in Ghana and Africa. And you, Farida has joined us today for the return to Africa, return to Ghana. Summit. And we're going to talk about entrepreneurship, specifically experiencing entrepreneurship and some of and disability matters. So some of the challenges and opportunities that you, Farida yourself have gone through uh, as you navigated the, the waters of the world on your journey. So welcome Farida. Thank you so much for joining us today in this summit. Um, Farida, I want you to give us an opportunity to learn a bit more about you. I've learned a bit more about you. I've learned a bit about you from my own research and in speaking with my husband who works you. And I would love for you to share with us who is Farida? Uh, you know, what is it that you know about you? What are you know superpowers? What makes you inspires you, what excites you. Share a little bit about yourself with our viewers, please. Okay, well, I, as you said, I am I, I, I'm a technologist. I, specifically, I'm a software engineer. And I am very bad at talking about myself. So it would be better if, if you ask a simple question. Because when you can't be talking about myself, I feel miserable, but I can give you a, a bit of my background. Um, I was born in Lagos, um, Nigeria. Then, as a, as a child, we, my father was working with the UNDP, so we moved around a lot. And I understand you're, you're from Trinidad, right? I'm from Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica, rather, right, yeah. Because I grew up in Dominica and Grenada as a child. The Caribbean, yeah. so uh, yeah. I, I always consider those islands my my second home. It, it was really lovely going back there a couple of years ago. Yeah. After for, yeah. after about thirty years, so yeah, we, I grew up in Dominica, I grew up in Grenada, and I moved to Ghana at the age of nine. And that that was my first experience. Actually, that was my second experience. In Africa, because at the, in, in 1985, no, yeah, yeah, in 1985, 86, my grandmother was living in Nigeria, so we went there to visit her, and that was actually my first experience in Africa. But, but when we moved back to Ghana in 1988, and, and, and we settled here, that was my real first experience. Living living here. And I mean, the, the initially we were supposed to move to another African country, Swaziland, but my dad was going to get that place from there. But my sister and I, we love being home. But for the first time we felt as if we were home. I mean, we had all our relatives around that. We had, and it, it was quite exciting to see people and know that you share the blood with them, yeah. and yeah. As, as opposed to always being a stranger in, in, in somebody else's land. Yeah. Yeah. So we told our mom that we like to so much that we wanted to stay. Luckily for us, my, my dad didn't get the appointment, so we stayed in Ghana. Awesome. And, that was, awesome. and that was the beginning of my relationship here. Yeah. Yeah. Remind, were you born in Nigeria? Because there's some report that you were born in Nigeria. Or is that not correct? Yeah, I was born in Nigeria, but I'm Ghanaian. But you're Ghanaian. Okay. But you're Ghanaian. Okay. You know, you, you know, in, in, here, we, we don't really care about where you are born. It's where your parents come from. Yes. Yes. That matters. We, we, are, very, we are very particular about those things. So, yeah. Yeah. So inspires you, Farida? I don't. I, I've, I've never been able to answer that question. I mean, people ask me all the time, and I'm like, I don't know what inspires me because all I know is that I have to achieve something, and I will not stop until I get what I want in life. And 
I think it, is, it, it, it slightly has to do with the way I brought up. I mean, I brought up by a mother who um, who who made sure that that she did what she needed to do to make sure that I will be as self sufficient as I can, so, so so that when she's not around, I'll be able to look after myself. And um, so, I, I, and I've always had been been a very competitive person, and and even when even when people are not competing with me, I'm competing with them. That is what um, that is what drives me. Um, I um, I also like that that face challenges. The challenges are what gives me the 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 drive to 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 to, to do better. Yeah. And when, yeah. when things are easy for me, I, I get bored. So I always have to do something else. So um, every milestone in my life, every major milestone in my life, or every major achievement that I have achieved is it, it, it because I, it, it as a result of me being bored <laughs> and dissatisfied with the status quo, so to speak. Awesome. So you, awesome. you're very yeah. internally. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I can awesome. read the story about your, the story about your mom and the commitment that she made to ensuring, like you said, that you had a normal life. But it shows that that tenacity and strength that you have. Some of it, I see some of it in your mother. But, you know, yes, you're totally, to get to where you are, you have to be somebody who is self driven, who is self motivated, and to an extent competitive, as you said, right? Nobody's beating Farida, <laughs> right? Um, tell us about, um, I asked you about your superpowers and who inspires you, but in terms of entre you know, entrepreneurship, what inspired you to get into entrepreneurship specifically as opposed to going to a traditional job? Actually, man, entrepreneurship journey, I blame me solely on my business partner because that's me alone. I would not be an, 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 an entrepreneur. I have no interest in being an, an entrepreneur. It's 20 years ago you had asked me whether I wanted to be an, 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 an entrepreneur. And I said no. I don't know. Because that was the first worst thing from, from my mind. I was happy to work for somebody and, and, and do my work and get paid at the end of the month. I didn't want to worry about paying people and and all the other hassles that go with, with, with being an, an, an entrepreneur, so to speak. But um, what happened was um, I was working with, 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 with a friend of mine started a financial institution. And I, he invited me to join him to, to head the IT department of that financial institution. And when I got there, I realized that the software they were using was, wasn't very efficient and, and they could not expand with it. So I built a new software for them. Then within, within a short time, they were able to streamline their operations and expand and, and all that. And other financial institutions came and wanted it. So he decided that okay, this this is this is a business opportunity. So we should so we should leave the financial institution and form a company, a software company that will offer financial software to, to be financial institutions. So that is how how I become an 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 entrepreneur. So please blame him. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> In my corner, back in my corner, I didn't say I want to become an, 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 an entrepreneur at all. But then the journey had, had been quite interesting, and I didn't think I, I would I would give it up for anything because it had made me learn more about myself as a person as well as as learn learn more about other people, and and, and also I can see the impact that that my company is making. In, in, in our communities, in our country, so it, 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 it makes it all worthwhile. That's amazing. So you're yeah. accidentally an entrepreneur, but you're enjoying the journey. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I always to say that I, I went into entrepreneurship kicking and screaming, literally. 
<laughs> well, you did a great job, right? Because considering you went into it unwillingly, you ended up doing really being really successful at it. And like you said, having impact. So that's that's really cool. Uh, from your perspective, Farida, what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur in Ghana? From your perspective. First, the first thing I would say is resilience. You have to be, you have to be very resilient because, because it's, 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 it's a harsh world out there. I mean, it's very difficult. And um, you also have to, have to realize that what you want may not be what, what the, the masses want. And you, you may understand things from one angle, but they may understand it from another angle. So it's the same as in everywhere. Know your clients, know your, know what you want to achieve, and do all those things. But, but, but you really have to know your clients here. Because there are certain things that may not make sense to you, but, but the client who wants it, and who's paying you for it, it makes sense to the person. So you have to, to find a way of marrying the two. Mm -hmm. And um, also you have to be, to be willing to, to realize that, that things do not move as fast as you want them to move. You have to be very patient. You have to, you have to, you have to understand the culture of, of the people you are serving. But it plays a huge role in whether, whether, whether your, 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 your service or your product is successful or not. Mm -hmm. so some of, uh, of the things that you have to you know. You also have to... You also have to realize that you cannot distance yourself from your customers. You have to be at one with them. Because you have to know people who know people who know people. And that, that is the only to go to about doing business in, in Ghana or in Africa for that matter. Because connections pay, pay like, And by connections, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything. Thing, I mean, illicit or anything. It's, it's just a matter of, of you going to school with somebody and that person knows somebody who, who, who can recommend you for a contract or something like that. And that is how, how it works here. Because if you come here and you don't know any, anybody here, believe me, you struggle. You, you, you may be successful, but then you have to spend a long time building up that network. Because before you, you'll even be able to um, to, to show your product or, or talk to anybody, you have to know the person who you are going to stand in front of yeah. to, to demonstrate your, your product and service to. Mm -hmm. Wow, those are good tips. And, and I've heard that so many times, a lot of, um, especially the networking piece. Like you've got to be somebody who's willing to go out there and connect with people. Right? You can't get into entrepreneurship and just be comfortable being by yourself. You have to embrace others, especially in Ghana. It's so true in Ghana, right? So yeah. resilience, number one. You gotta be really resilient. You gotta know your customer, respect the culture, right? Because the culture, and that's, I had another session with a, a lady named Emma about, you know, just Ghanaian culture and what were some of the unique things about Ghanaian. If you're coming in from abroad, you may not be, aware of and, and, and even um, there's small things you may not be aware of the small things that you could be doing that could be seen as offensive or just completely misunderstanding the culture and then your product or service that you're trying to implement may just not work so having a respect for that like, like, like let me give you a small example yes if, if you yeah. somebody something with, with, with your left hand you have offended the person yeah. so, so you do not give anything with your left hand yeah. If you have to give something with your left hand, and then you apologize because for, for it. And these, these are little, little things that we have to know. Yeah. Uh, and so we are also very, very, very religious. And so you have to know about that as well. Yeah. Because either you are Christian or Muslim, those who are not religious are very few. So you have to realize that you are coming into a very religious country. So, so there are a lot of things that are not tolerated. Yes. Yeah. And I thank you for sharing that because that is what, those are some of the things that were covered in the, in the culture session, the left hand, 
I, my husband taught me that from the beginning. You know, you've got to do, make sure you respect the left, you know, the, the right hand because the left hand is seen as offensive in his in, in his culture. <laughs> I wouldn't have known otherwise, right? Unless I did my own research. But I was fortunate enough to tell me that. So yeah, respecting the culture. And then the networking piece. I think I can't stress it enough how important that is. And I'm glad that you did that. Rita, you yeah. talked about living in the Caribbean. So you said Trinidad, okay. Grenada, yeah, yeah, Dominica, 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 and you also lived a little bit in Nigeria, right? I didn't really, I didn't really st stay in Nigeria. I, I left Nigeria when I was one. When you were one, so I don't. yeah. So what in from all the countries that you've been in, what would you say is about Ghana. I mean, you said that there were some similarities with uh, the Caribbean. But what, what would you say is unique about Ghana, and what, what would be your top tips for returnees or travelers to get the best out of their Ghanaian experience? Um, we, we are very friendly people toward 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 strangers, and that is it. I mean, we are very hospitable and. Um, and we go out of our way to help strangers and foreigners and the people who are not from here. And uh, that is one thing about us. I mean, anybody who goes to any other African country, when they come to Ghana, they feel very welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is one thing that is very unique about us. And I cannot, I've lived in Ghana so long that I cannot think, I cannot pinpoint anything else. That is, that is different for me. But the, as you said, there, there are a lot of similarities between the Caribbean and, and Africa. I guess because, because we are the same people who have moved across the world. And, and no matter what, how, how many decades or centuries it takes, you, you cannot beat, you cannot change Showing somebody's genetic makeup like that. So, I mean, sometimes you go somewhere, you see somebody, and you're like, this person looks like somebody from a certain tribe yeah. in, in yeah. Ghana or Nigeria. You're like, wow. We know the person is probably from, 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 from America or Canada or, or one of the Caribbean countries. But I believe when you see the person, you can, you can, you can actually pinpoint the tribe. That, that that you have seen somebody like that look for, so yeah, yeah, and I think that's what's fascinating. Yeah. That is what's fascinating about this whole diaspora Africa relation. You know, there's so much as a Jamaican myself, there's so much similarities uh, between us as people that it's so important for us to bridge the gap and to try to understand each other. And I feel that's part of the reason why Lauren and I were so passionate about the summit is because we feel now is the time for you know to for, for Africans to really start looking at coming back and those in the diaspora who are not necessarily born in Africa but have are descendants of to come back and bring their talents, bring their gifts and invest or 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 even visit, you know, just to see what it's like, support the culture. Because if we band together, we have to do more together, right? Yeah. 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 But what I would say is that when you come, when you come, and and, and things are not the way that you that you that you want it to be or you expect it to be, just accept it and and try not to criticize so much and, and, and complain about lack 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 of twenty four hour electricity and all those things. Because this is what what this is what we live with. I um, mean. I mean, I, I'll be the first person to, to say that, yeah, there are challenges here. Yeah. Things are not as easy as they are over there, especially for somebody with a disability. And, but, but this is what we live with, and we are trying to, to, um, to gradually change it. it it's, it's, not as quickly, it's not going as quickly as some of us wish it to be. Sometimes we have power crisis, it goes away, it turns back, you don't know. I mean, sometimes you have to literally pray for, for, for the rain to fall so, so, so that the, the, the dam will get full, so that you have electricity mm -hmm. and 
I mean, these are some of the things that are related. So if you are coming here and you want to settle here, forget about, about, about the teacher comforts. I mean, if you get them fine, but if you don't get them uh, once in a while, your, your life goes up. Accept it because that is the price you pay for, for, for being home. The, on the other side, on the other hand, the, the, there's no racism here. Everybody look look, look like you. So so, so you, 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 weigh, you weigh the two. And you say that, okay, do I want to be in a society where, where I'm going to church by my color? Or do I want, want, want to be in a society where I may not be judged by, by my color, but I may not have, have, have constant electricity and work? Yes, yes. You have to make. <laughs> you got to be willing to put up with it because at the end of the day, it's beautiful, right? If you can put up with the tough parts, you get there's so much benefit to being at home. Exactly. And, and after a while, you, you, you don't even consider it, it, it has been tough. It just, it just becomes a, a part of life. I mean, when, 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 when the lights go off, you just put up on your bed towel, generator, or whatever. You really can't go on. You, 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 put, you, you put it off and you go back to the city. Yeah. If, if, if the water doesn't come from your area for a long time, you go and, um, and buy water. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, these are things that we live with. So if, so if you are coming here, you should, you should be prepared to go through some of those inconveniences. Yeah. That is, uh, uh, yeah. I'm assuming that, that you are coming to 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 live, and, and it is coming to be in a hotel and all those things where 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 you will not feel those 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 inconveniences. Yes, yes. Thanks for sharing. That's a reality. Exactly. We we had that a couple times when we went down. You know, lights went out. Even my husband was there. He, you know, a couple times lights went out. I was like, okay, get it. Okay. So thank you for sharing that. So people have to come down with the right mindset. If they're especially if they're coming to live, you gotta come with the right mindset. That this is not necessarily, you know, North America or wherever it is that you come from that has the, like you said, creature comforts. But Ghana for what it's for what it, for what it's worth, it's improving. So many developments are happening and you know, the more of us that come in and and, and, and invest and contribute to the development, the sooner we'll get to that place where we all can be comfortable in whatever space we want, right? Yeah. Awesome. So let me ask you, this is a little political. I don't know how you, but with politics, but how do you feel about the current administration, the work that they're doing in Ghana? Do you have faith in the current administration and, and the, the progress that's being made on the ground? Can somebody who's coming into Ghana feel comfortable that there's a stable, there's stability? Uh, say that again, how do I feel about it? The current administration, the political administration, so the current government that's in, in place, are they, are they making um, the right choices, do you feel, for God's name? Are you hopeful that what the promises that they're delivering, that they are going to be fulfilling them? Do you see progress being made? Well, as it is with the government, the, the main promises, some of them get fulfilled, some of them don't get fulfilled. And I always say that, so say that sometimes, the, so sometimes when they are in, in the position, regardless of which government you are talking about, they always have a promise. Now, now when they come and, and they, they see, see the reality, they cannot deliver on all their promises. Mm -hmm. So regardless of which government mm -hmm. is in power, I always maintain that. In this government, I think that they are doing things in the right direction. I mean, with regards to to trying to um, to bring some harmony into the into the into the administrative aspect. I mean, they, they, they are computerizing a lot of things, which are, which which will make things easier for people uh, to to access. To, no, to access some services, uh, for instance, they, they finally computerized the, the, the passport application process, yeah. which, which, which has been very easy for, for Ghanaians to now 
um, I applied for a passport and all this. And so those are some of the things that, that I think are a step in the right direction. We are, we are still struggling with our economy. I mean, and, yeah. that, and that is, I mean, something that, that all the governments have struggled with. Because as long as you are, you are, you are in, in an economy that, 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 is a sport, that is important more, more than it is important, there are no quick, 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 quick or hard fix, fix for it. Yeah. So no matter which, which, yeah. which government has the power, it, until we are able to bridge that gap, we will always have, have this problem yeah. that we are having. Yeah. And, and but, so what, mm -hmm. what I think now is say that they are, they are trying to promote Ghana with, with tourism, which, which is very good. We, I mean, as you can see, this this, this year, year, the year of the return, is it, a great initiative because it will, it will attract, it will, it will suddenly make put 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 Ghana on the tourism map. I mean. We, we have always had the castles and the, and, and the slave, whatever, but nobody had, but we have never really been considered a tourist attraction. Yeah. But, but yeah. now it looks like, like, like that is changing. So if you're able to capitalize on that and get a lot more tourists to come here, then it should be good and, and it may help, 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 help the economy tremendously. Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. Like this is really exciting. I, I love. It. You know what's interesting, and and I, I don't know if I share, but when Lauren and I came together to put together this summit, this was before the main government declared year of return. We had a passion. We had a passion for coming to the United States dinner. And literally, I believe it was two two months that the uh, government announced. 2019 would be the year of return. And we're like, this is year return. It's an opportunity for us to bring the together to understand that Ghana is really, it's a, it's a viable place for investment for ads for people to come and live. Right? And once we get more people recognizing that, we have an opportunity to improve the, the economy. We've got people who can create jobs, people who can employ people, bring their skills and and and, and services. And I think that it's it's going to be a beautiful thing in in the end. So thanks for sharing that. Okay, now out of sight of entrepreneurship, you do a lot of advocacy work. As, as it relates to disability, specifically as uh, for cerebral palsy, but do you have other disability um, initiatives that you advocate for, or is it primarily for cerebral palsy? And what it is, what is it that you do? Well, I, 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 I don't just advocate for cerebral palsy. I advocate for inclusion, but inclusion is something that, regardless of whether you have autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, or the other disabilities, we all need, to, need to, to be included in, in society, in every aspect of society. So I'm, I'm part of, of an organization called ShareCare. ShareCare is actually an organization of people with, with, with autoimmune and neurological conditions, and we, we, we have a center in, um, in, in one of the, the, the deprived communities called Osualaka. And we, we found that, that there are lots of children with cerebral palsy and other disabilities in that community. So we have, so we have opened a center there. So we're talking about your advocacy work. We're talking about your advocacy work. And you're saying it's beyond circle. And you're saying it's beyond circle. And you're saying it's beyond inclusion. Yeah, so, um, so what we do, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm part of an organization called Shaker. Shaker is an organization which is which is which has a support group for people with autoimmune and neurological conditions. So we do advocacy, uh, and we have also opened um, a, a therapy center in in Osu Alata, which 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 serves the the children who have cerebral palsy and other 
the disabilities in that community. So we, we, we have about 20 children who come there on a week, uh, three times a week, and they don't pay anything. So, so it's self uh, yeah. So, oh, so that's, so that's, is that so in Accra? Is it yeah. also in Accra? Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, also, Anata is the is the. Okay, so so you have also uh, you, which which is the the posh part that everybody knows, but behind also uh, uh, the uh, there's a bit of of, of a deprived community there. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so okay. that's where, where the center is here. Yeah. That's amazing. So you that you see those children three times a week, or your or your charity sees the kid children three times a week and they take care of them and those are the ones who don't have yeah. medical care yeah that's awesome yeah. wow you see i mean it's incredible that you've gone through your own situation but you're still able to impact other people by having that extension to your work work do you do any work with uh you know in in policy change like changing policy around um in the, within government or within uh, other organizations that will help to impact uh, the lives of persons with disabilities? Not with disability, um, but I am part of the um, the kind of federation of, of, the, of the disabled. We, we have an, an, an endowment fund, so I am part of, of the administration of that endowment fund. With regards to the, to the to, to policy and and stuff with the administration, I was recently appointed onto the presidential advisory committee for science and technology and uh, innovation. So that, that is what currently do the government. That's yeah. awesome. So you can influence. I'm not I'm trying not to to overstress myself because. I have a lot of things that I'm doing, plus I have my company yeah. as well. It would be my number one parent. Yes. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're a busy woman. So, but, but being in that role, though, you're, able to have, you're still able to contribute to um, how technology is evolves in, in Ghana, as well as perhaps influencing how people perceive um, technology from the angles of somebody who has a disability. You're able to have that insight as well, right? Yeah. And, and recently I came up, I don't know what, whether you, you have heard, heard about Kamza, the comic book that I wrote. Yes, I was going to ask you about uh, Kamza. Yes, tell us about Kamza. Yeah. So, so what happened was uh, I met the, the CEO of Lati Art. Lati Art is, 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 is a game developer. It's, it's a comic, uh, it's a digital comic and game development company in Ghana. They, they have done some amazing work with regards to digital, to, to try to digitalize our, our folklore and, uh, and make comics out of our folklore, like, like Anansi stories and all those things. Yeah, so, uh, so what happened was, was I met the CEO at a conference in in Pigali, I mean, we, are, we, are, we, we move in the same circles in our prayer. I mean, we, we are, like, we say hello to each other and all that stuff, but, but we are never really sat down and had a conversation. Mm -hmm. but, but when I went to Kigali, I sat in one of his, his sessions. We, we were both speakers at the conference. It was about the master class, Bao Bao Summit. So we were both speakers at the conference, and, and after my session, I went and sat in one of his sessions. And he was, and he was talking about how to, how to develop a comic and all those things. But while I was sitting there, I was like, how, how, about, how about coming up with a comic which has a superhero with a bad person? Because growing up, I have always loved, loved comics. I've always loved my, my, my Superman, He-Man, Sheila. I was I was one of those tomboys who like that. Okay. So so I said that I like I, I like the superhero growing up, but I never saw anybody who looked like me. I did not feel represented in that regard. I mean there, there, there are people in wheelchairs, there are people who are visually impaired, 
But I didn't tell anybody who had my disability with cyber policy. The action hero who has cyber policy in, in the comic book world. Yeah. So I decided to, yeah. to, 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 to write about, to form a, a superhero in cyber policy. And so I, I wrote a story and let's see at People illustrated it, and that is how Panda came out came to be. And the, the reception has been so amazing. I mean, yeah. even before we, yeah. even before we, we actually released the comic, when when we, we when we we released the concept over CP Day in October, I had responses from all over the world as far as 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 Australia. Wow. They, they were all tweeting about it. They were like, thank you, Parita, for doing this for us. Because so, so it's like people wanted something like that, but nobody had wanted to do it for, for, for children with disabilities. I was like, wow. Yeah. I, I, I was actually interviewed by, by somebody in, in, in Canada. Um, so this hospital, now this children hospital called Bloom. Bloom Hospital, they, 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 they interviewed me for the, for, for the newsletter. What was their name? I, I was saying, what was their name? Uh, Bloom. 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 Oh. B-L-O-O-M. Yeah. I will send you the link for the yeah. so that you can read it. Yeah. That would be great. And, and, uh, be great. and it's like, and it's like, it has opened a whole new world for me. Yeah. One, one that I never thought to yeah. get into. I've, I've been invited to to to, to speak at, at two seminars this this year yeah. because of Kamza. Yeah. So. That's amazing! Wow, That's amazing. I like her. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How do you feel about Black Panther? Did you like Black Panther? I love Black Panther. I love Black Panther. I'm watching Black Panther. I'm watching the impact that it had. It's, it's actually what, what gave me the, the courage to, to do Kamsa because I was like, now, now is the time for us to have more black superheroes. Yes. Uh, why not, why not have one with a disability? That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> are, you, are you planning on any other characters, any follow-up characters? Or we just got to wait? Eventually, yeah. Uh, we, we, we just yeah. we released the first issue at the end of um, of December. Yeah. So we are uh, yeah. we plan on, on doing about four, four issues a year. So yeah. maybe from next year yeah. I, I will start doing other kinds. Of stuff. And, uh, I want to spend time on Canada. You awesome. And how do you find out? How do you get access? How do we find out about um, Kamza? Like, how do we get the magazine or the um, the publication? It's actually available on Kindle now. So. On Kindle, okay. Yes, on Kindle. Okay, so I'll make sure I'll leave some links for people to connect once if they want to find out more about you and as well as your comic. Uh, I thank you so much, Farid. I enjoyed talking to you. I could talk to you for uh, forever, but I know we've, you've got a busy schedule. Uh, thank you for contributing to the summit. If there's one thing that you'd like to you know, the la one last thing that you'd like to say to those who want to come to Ghana, who are learning about Ghana, and say, you know what, this may be something that I could do. I could come to, I could, I'm going to come and check out Ghana. What would you say would be your best piece of advice to uh, somebody who's desiring to come, come for the first time? Come with an, with an, with an, with an, with an open mind. Um, know that it's a different um, it's a different ball game here. Yeah? Things are not that as things will not be the same as where you are coming from. So come with an open mind and come and 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 have fun. Yeah. Have fun yeah. exploring the country. Have fun exploring making friends with the new people. Have fun learning about uh, about our way of life, mm -hmm. and try as much as possible not to complain about the things that that, that you've been missing out on while you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh -huh.
Thank you, Marina. And you know what? I can't leave this conversation without asking you, what do you prefer, Ghanaian jollof or Nigerian jollof? Ghanaian jollof. Did you say, did you say Ghanaian jollof? I said Ghanaian jollof all the way. All the way. Okay. All the way. Awesome. <laughs> It's been a pleasure, Farida. I'm so grateful that I had the time to connect with you. And I'll make sure, like I said, I'll leave the information about uh, your, your, how people can get in touch with you. And um, have a wonderful day. Enjoy the weather, even though it's so, it's, it's still raining? Is it still raining now? No, it's not raining. So, so, so the heat is coming back. Coming down. All right. <laughs> Well, enjoy your enjoy your evening and thanks again. Have a good day. Okay. okay, take care. Take bye care. bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.